who's been at the closing panels some previous skill by the base so we have a debate right we 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 started the debate panel and it was really working well eliminating the issues and so we follow the Oxford debate format in a kind of a little bastardized fashion which makes it better and easier so here's the the, the way we're going to do it uh, we're going to debate a proposition that open source AI is the future and if it's too general right sometimes it needs to be refined so you guys are welcome to address either the very general statement that open source AI will win and we have two teams and we randomly divided folks into pro closed source and pro open source it's for sports it doesn't mean if people should believe this they can you, you guys are welcome to reveal your actual preference at the end but for now please stick to the to the team so uh, if you want a refined or more detailed uh, motion we can form it like this that in five years new billion dollar companies will be based on open source AI right and I'm saying new because established legacy companies have their own histories and you can count open the eyes and establish probably billion dollar company by then right but new billion dollar companies in five years will be based on open source AI this is the refined proposition or you can generally argue that open source AI will win in some fashion which you can define so the uh, we have one hour so we will be very efficient uh, first, uh, you know, each team uh, uh, will uh, introduce themselves. So every person has three minutes, right? And you can use one minute for general information about yourself, one minute for your key points of interest, which does not have to be about open source AI or general AI at all, right? Tell us, like, who you are, what are you about? And use one minute to stake your position according to your team. Say why closed source AI is the future or contrary, say why open source AI is the future. So after we're done with these introductions, uh, basically each team has three minutes to refine their position, right? So we'll go basically left, right, left, right. So the team basically will state more arguments and you can then address the arguments which other teams raised. And we'll basically do several iterations of this. And uh, then we'll open the floor to questions from the audience. Uh, so the goal of this uh, debate is to sway the audience. So first, we're going to take the vote, which will be approximate, right, and note how many people believe that in five years, new billion dollar companies will be based on open source AI. Who believes that the future is open source AI and new companies will be based on open source AI? Okay, we have a really small amount of hands here. So, and okay, who believes that in five years, new billion dollar companies will be based on closed source AI? We have a little bit more. And okay, who believes that nothing will happen in five years? Like, who didn't raise their hands? Like, we need. So we have the basically a, a very good Jean kind of group, like right? undecided. Okay, so we, we, you guys have something to work with. Very good. All right. So now I think I'll start with open source folks who are next to me. So maybe introduce yourselves from Pete and uh, to, to Miguel. Hi. I'm Pete Skamrock. I'm an angel investor and a advisor to AI and data companies. Um, I started my career uh, working on retail. Uh, Profit optimization. Uh, found my way to the internet. Worked at AOL Search, uh, and then ultimately to LinkedIn, where uh, I joined uh, when it was about 300 employees, um, and was early on the data team, building things like skills and endorsements using machine learning. Um, and in the years following LinkedIn, I built a company called SkipFlag, which used natural language to organize and understand your company's internal knowledge and information. So kind of a precursor of a lot of things happening uh, now with LLMs. Um, but this was in the days of, uh, I guess, word to vec and you know, some of the earlier uh, 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 explorations in, in this space. Uh, Open versus closed source. So I'm also an advisor to Common Crawl, um, which is an open web crawl that you know, like the pile and many of these uh, LLMs are trained on, or I guess all of them essentially. 
um, all the major ones. Um, and I'm a big believer that more eyes make all bugs shallow, whether it comes to human systems and society, whether it comes to code, whether it comes to, to technologies that we build. Um, and I think that uh, our team is gonna make some compelling arguments for this being much better for your business uh, and for society to support uh, open source, not just in your software, but in your models and in the systems that you build. Um, it, it's, it's the better path, and it's really the path we're already on, so I don't see a reason to change it. Thank you. Awesome, and I'm Eric Peter. Um, I currently sit on the product team at Databricks, um, part of our Lakehouse AI, which is our ML platform. And I lead our efforts, uh, one, around how we make RAG applications easier for our customers to build, and then two, how we uh, make generative AI models easier for our customers to fine tune and train from scratch. So I've, I've been in the, the data AI space for a while, uh, but I started my career on the, what I call the dark side, uh, management consulting. Um, spent a number of the years there, um, and then transitioned to Google, where I did uh, essentially on the cloud side, we built recommendation systems for our customers. So. Also, in the word to Vec days, um, using vector databases before everyone thought that the vector database was the next big thing. Um, <laughs> that's debatable. Uh, we should I, debate, I we should debate is vector database a real space? Okay. Or, yeah, that, that's what I want to talk about. I had a pitch in my inbox <laughs> right before this panel, so they're still going. It's, it's de definitely another vector database is what we need. Um, but yeah, then uh, founded my own MLOps company. And yeah, landed at Databricks after that. So I, I think that you know, on the, the open source versus closed source debate, I'll just kind of play this side of it for right now. And on open source, right, there's some very critical advantages, just like in software, right, being able to kind of know what's under the hood, um, kind of having full control if you want it, being able to take that code and bring it in-house, be able to run it, um, as well as kind of complete customization um, over, over those models. So. Seems like you know that, that coupled with the fact that you know AI is fundamentally going to change the world in probably many ways that we haven't even thought of yet here um, in this room, it, it only makes sense that those systems that fundamentally are going to make critical life decisions for all of us, probably up to including life or death in some cases, should be open and transparent to the rest of the world. So I'm excited for our arguments here in a brief moment. Awesome. Yeah, my name is Miguel Bernardin. I work for Pulse AI. Um, we're a company that aggregates all the API endpoints for large LLMs. So kind of thinking about if you have OpenAI or maybe Entropic or a few other ones, um, you have a single API uh, to be able to query against multiple uh, models. Definitely check us out. Um, but about me, I've uh, been in the distributed system space for over 10 years, um, primarily started off from Accenture uh, when I first discovered Hadoop, um, got Cloudera certified, was able to help our uh, distributed data scientists be able to migrate their ML workflows on our Cloudera backend. And uh, since then, you know, our infrastructure has grown. Um, I've learned a lot, worked for, after that I worked for uh, Mesosphere because I converted the cluster over to Mesosphere cluster and learned a lot about distributed systems then. Um, since then, um, made a product from there, helped us do, do uh, multi-cloud deployments uh, with the single unified API, uh, our command. Um, and so been in this space for quite some time for managing distributed systems at scale. Um, and we did a lot of GPU for doing ML. Um, so fast forward that, uh, I went to a cryptocurrency company um, it's a lot in that space, um, but since then um, I've been a user of uh, large language models for, for quite some time, and I'm sure you, all of you as well, um, but um, I'm at Pulse. Um, my stance on open source, uh, I feel like with, when it comes to this argument, you know, we're really big users of uh, Linux that's open source, um, and it powers a lot of the, the platforms that we have today. Uh, I think for companies that are going to leverage that, I think you have to have access for an autonomy to your resources, your data, and I think that's very important, especially since the power and the capabilities of LLMs are just in you know realms that almost are un, 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 
uncomprehensible. Uh, I think the, the reach, the capabilities are beyond, I think, where we are today. And I, and, and I very much feel that you know, companies that are going to make conscious decisions about protecting their data, making sure that it's enabling their use cases, enabling their niche, their access, um, their value add, I think an open source um, component to be able to have that in-house is a significant uh, requirement, I think. Um, and, and I think even our company is moving towards that step as well to ensure that people have that autonomy. So there, there is a strong play on, op on the open source side. And I think over time, you know, th I think the industry is going to kind of make that decision based on the needs that the company has. But that's uh, the stance and about me as well. Thank you. The, we have the team open source. Now with team closed source. Please start with Manasi. All right. I'll start with you. <laughs> Uh, we were just talking whether we should go this way or that. Um, hi, I'm Manasi. If you were at my previous talk, hello again. Thanks for sticking around. Um, I'm the founder and CEO of Verda. Um, technical background, did my PhD in computer science at MIT. Built what now has become experiment management. So that PhD work led on to MLflow and other systems that are in the space. Have been building systems for model management, for model serving, for better part of, I guess, 10 years, which someone called me OG, and I'm like, wow, am I that old? I guess <laughs> the answer is yes. Um, to that, have done data science, have done infrastructure building. We at Verda provide a model operations and management platform. Um, we started off with you know, your regular models, as they're now called, or traditional models, and now LLMs. Um, I spoke a little bit about our work on the generative AI um, workbench earlier. And yeah, really enjoy building tools for data and AI. So that's a bit about me. On closed source and open source, um, at least for this topic, for this debate, uh, I'm on the closed source side. There's a few things I think closed source has going for it. Um, one is just it's very expensive to build any of these models. If it's Meta or OpenAI um, or Amazon or Microsoft, like those are the only people who are going to be able to realistically build it unless there's like a significant change in technology that happens. It takes insane amounts of compute. It takes insane amounts of data um, to train these things. And also, you need the expertise. If you've heard the news, like OpenAI is trying to poach folks from Google for a million or 10 million, I think it was 10 million. It's like most companies don't have that kind of cash to spend on you know, individual hires. And so I think it's going to be really expensive. Um, second, the closed source models have made their interfaces and their user experience really, really easy. And so one of the prospects that we were talking to just yesterday was like, I don't want to have to hire uh, really expensive ML people or data science people because we are using open source models. I'm going to trust that OpenAI or whatever vendor they're using um, are going to do that for us and that we can trust that it has gone through the tests. It has been built the right way. They're dealing with copyright issues that might come up. I'm going to shift the burden of responsibility to them and reduce my cost center, essentially. And I think that is a really compelling reason for going with closed source. Um, and then open source doesn't mean that the model is perfect. It's like, if you think about you drive a Toyota or a Ford or Tesla, I don't know, you don't know all the schematics. All you care about is like, it's working, it gets me from here to there and it's safe. I think models, I think of them as very similar as long as they do the job they were intended to do that's good enough, and most people are going to be able to make do with that. So lots more to talk about, but that's kind of <laughs> uh, you know, the one minute spiel. Awesome. Is mine on? Yes. Yep. Hey, guys. My name is Ryan. I'm the founder and CEO of Kadea. Uh, we're focused on building identity management and access control into things like RAG and agents. Um, so if that's something you're dealing with, we'd love to talk to you. Um, I started my career studying bioinformatics, uh, quickly jumped in as a really early employee at Nutanix, where I cut my teeth on enterprise, distributed infrastructure, and uh, eventually moved into sales engineering, which taught me a lot. And then uh, after Nutanix started the first and I think largest data science boot camp in the US, it was called Zipian Academy, started right here, or not right here, in San Francisco and uh, ended up selling that company to galvanize and then scaling it nationwide. Um, and then after, after galvanize, I was pretty burnt out. So took what was supposed to be 
one year traveling the world, but ended up buying a camper van in Santiago de Chile, and the rest is history, drove all the way down to the southern tip of Argentina and back again, so three years. And then most recently I was CTO at a data science consultancy called Tribe AI. Um, it's about 200 practitioners focused on building you know, solutions that deliver business value to, to enterprises. Um, and I would say my stance on open versus closed is really born of my experience. Um, while I, f I think they each open source and closed source has their place, I've actually been surprised in the number of companies that I've talked to, usually with you know, a security bent, in that they've already fine-tuned a lot of models internally on their own data. And they don't actually, when pressed, they don't actually care if it's open or closed source. Mm. They actually care more about their ability to control it. So is it hosted on our infrastructure? Is it secure? Is it monitored? All of these things. And so they would, you know, if, if Anthropic, and I've talked to companies who are talking to them, are willing to allow their model to be hosted and fine-tuned on someone else's infrastructure, I don't think the companies are really going to, to care. And so I think this really comes down to which product is going to deliver the most value at the cheapest cost. And we've seen that you know, with Microsoft and their massive investments in data center infrastructure, there is this kind of tipping point of where you're able to capture a lot of gains um, if you can aggregate all of this demand together. And so I think they both have their place, but from my experience, companies are really worried about data privacy, they're worried about controlling these models, they're still, it's, still new, it, it's still new technology. And so I would ask like, if a company takes an open source model, fine tunes it on their proprietary data, is it still open source? Hmm. Especially if they don't give it back. Right, and if they, don't, if they don't contribute back to a library or contribute back to the model, and like, where would we be in an open source community if Llama hadn't dropped from Facebook, you know, for example? So, we, we have a lot more to talk about, um, but yeah, I'll pass it off. That's great, uh, and that is a sort of a nuanced, subtle like, point that I think is worth, we'll, go, we'll get back to. And let me make a few boring commercial ones. So I'm James Champ, I'm a VC at a firm called Bloomberg Beta. I mostly invest in developer tools and ML infrastructure things like Twilio or um, Weights and Biases or Chroma and stuff like that. And, um, and so it's 2023, you're saying in five years, so 2028, like what will the biggest companies be like? And will those biggest companies be open source or closed source? And I, and I think you do your historical analogy, you do your way back machine, you say, okay, um, if I started, like let's use the web example, if I like, I don't know, if I did Ruby on Rails, if I was 37 signals, right, would I rather be, who made the most money on Ruby on Rails? And I, I kind of say it's like Twitter and Zendesk. Then they basically sort of figured out ways to make money on it, built these great businesses, and made a bunch of money. There's a good question Wait, of like- James, are you arguing in favor of open source now? Closed source, no, no, I'm saying <laughs> they were actually, interesting enough- Ruby on Rails is open source. No, but they wrote all this code themselves, they kept all of it for themselves, right? Ultimately, their true profit center all kept from, came from stuff they kept for themselves, they piggybacked off of it, right? So that's one. Another example might be, I don't know, you think about Linux? But by the transitive property open source, then open source wins. Well, right? no, until, <laughs> I think, so I think you're exactly right in this sense, that there's a period where it makes a lot of sense to be open source, and then there's a different period of commercialization where all the returns go to the people who end up figuring out ways to commercialize, and for a better or worse, end up being closed source. And so there's an argument to be made that like, in 2024, should you be default open source or should you be default closed source? And I think it's not a crazy idea that you should be default closed source if you're trying to make the billion dollar company for 2028 or 2029. Thank you. We have the original positions, so now uh, there will be rebuttal. So team open source, I think you have your work cut out for you, right? The extremely compelling arguments from you closed source. So let's give you five minutes to dismantle and attack with the position and strengthen your open source position in any order. I, I, I hate to... I hate, I, I hate to do this, but I feel like now we're, we're getting out of technical arguments and we're in, in the chat GPT language debate arena. I feel like you're trying to do something kind of sneaky there, James, in that you are saying using open source and building that billion dollar company is actually 
because you don't give away all the code inside your company that you built on top of these open source language models, that that counts for team closed source. And it obviously every company there's a gray area of, they're not all pure closed source or all open source, probably every company uses open source in some way, right? Um, so like I, I don't think it's like, like, I guess there was this original, like, is it Stallman, like open source is a virus, like once it's out there, then every, maybe this is better for you to follow up on being at Databricks and dancing that dance. Yeah, I, I guess like, because it's, it's interesting. You're, you're essentially saying, hey, like if you want to be commercially successful, you have to hold some things back from the open source project. And I, I think that like this is a little potato potato Databricks argument. Databricks does that, yeah. to be clear. <laughs> is, is, I are mean, we literally talking about SaaS? Like, SAS. this is SaaS. Right? Yeah. <laughs> And, and I think it gets back to like, well, what, what defines actually open source, right? Is, is it do you, to be called open source, do you have to have 100% of everything open? Or, or are you able to have some parts of your product be closed source? I, I, I'm going to say no. Like, nobody has that expectation, I think, unless they're uh, the, the guy who doesn't use email, right? Like, yeah. he, or is, yeah. I think that's what happens, right? Like, you, if you're so extremist, like, okay, I don't even type emails. Uh, that that's the kind of vibe. Like nobody takes that seriously, right? Every company, it's it's always a mixture, and that's why you have these build versus buy debates. So I think the really like pragmatic question here is, those companies four years from now, I like this framing, like the the companies that everyone's going to be like, oh, I wish I invested in X Y Z, and they built this amazing AI. Um, I think you could even look at the ones right now, right? Because it's not just open AI and everybody else and everyone else is open source. There are a, a number of other I would even source. argue like if you look at what open AI is built on at the core, it's an open source paper called the, you know, so, attention so, is all that you need. And, and, and so in and, this and case, where would we have been had right. Google not open source yeah, that data research? Do you have access to open AI's weights? What? Do you have access to their weights? Or their, uh, according to ChatGPT, OpenAI is a great code. example of open source. <laughs> so I, actually, I actually, I, I'd, I'd like to cite uh, ChatGPT's answer yeah. that it gave me earlier. I asked it, um, "quote Why are open source LLMs better than closed source LLMs?" And ChatGPT, GPT-4, mind you, open source LLMs, like the one developed by OpenAI, offer several advantages over closed source LLMs. I won't read the rest of the, the responses, but I'm, yeah, I'm no pretty sure this is one of the... Large language models the, the, are very open AI is, as far as I know, it's, it's, it's our, open source. Our, our Lord and Savior, ChatGPT, has spoken, so... It's, it's funny, because I have a thread on my phone that's the exact opposite. <laughs> what? I have, I have a thread on my phone of the exact opposite with ChatGPT, so well, I, I don't know who... you know... <laughs> so maybe the future of debates is exactly this. Yeah. We will both leave thinking that we won the debate because ChatGPT. We'll just will. have the agents argue for us, yeah. and then it'll just tell us who won. Okay, but but seriously speaking, like if you were starting a company in 2024, like at its core, would you try to build a model in which you were going to give the weights to everyone else, or would you think about it differently? I think the question is also: Are you building your own model, right? Like, if you're if you want to get to market, there's different kinds of companies. If the goal of your company is to build better models, that's a different kind of company. But if you're trying to build a smarter Zendesk, or you want to build the next ride-sharing company, or whatever it is, the quickest path to success is going to be the best model, which today continues to be closed source. So then you go and build on the closed source. Why, why, and I why think, do you think I, that and is? Sorry, and so I think there's another angle on that, which is like where we are in the arc of commercialization of like some technology. And there's almost like there's a slightly terrifying thing. I don't know if you ever look at like Microsoft's announcements. They're spending a bunch of money on these data centers, right? And if people don't actually use these data centers to run things, we're kind of all screwed because it's actually very, like, it's hard to lay people off. It's harder to get rid of, like, huge, huge capital expenditures. And so there's almost a way in which we need strong use cases, right? We need actual adoption like and use. Open source models beyond, being trained on top or, of Microsoft's yeah, infrastructure. Right, right, right. But beyond <laughs> co-pilots. I mean, co and there's, there is a way in which, like, if we don't focus on building applications, and to be honest, most applications really are, like, closed source, we don't focus on building interesting applications, we're all going to look really, really dumb in, like, 20 
Yeah, so I have a, a quick question. So uh, in the companies that I talk to, they make these models work by incorporating proprietary data, mm. typically in sensitive contexts. So defense, healthcare, insurance, banking. And so they have created an artifact that they fundamentally cannot share. Um, those companies, like if I'm building a company five years from now, I, like the open source models will get as good as 3.5 or 4 or better. And then the fine tuning infrastructure is going to be there. And so really all you're competing on is quality of data. We've seen that smaller parameter model sizes with better training sets outperform larger models with worse data. And so I think the argument is who is going to be better at accruing that data advantage? Is it closed source companies or is it the open source community? <laughs> I, 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 that's Trust me, this is not my actual position. I'm, I'm <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, like, if, if we if we step out, like, I think the the interesting thing here is like, if you take away the model for a second, actually, the bigger challenge is exactly what, the, what I kind of just read on my phone. Like, is the model actually giving me the correct answer? Right. When we talk to our customers, what we hear is, yeah, I, great. I just need a model that works for my use case, and I need to know is that thing giving me a correct answer. I need to have confidence that it's giving me that correct answer. How do I get to that? And I think that to me is like, that's the quintessential debate we should be having is how do we evaluate these models? How do we determine if these models are giving me a correct answer? And how do I get the confidence to put ChatGPT or Llama into my call center? And it's not gonna hallucinate and say that, you know, yeah, you can have some free stuff. And so from your point of view, is that a point <laughs> of like costs? Like, because certainly like, Folks do end up building a bunch of infrastructure before and after that turn out to be too expensive right now. Like, is there this question of like, as the costs go down, these things will be more available, or do you feel like they're genuine breakthroughs that people have, technical breakthroughs that people have to go through? I think, if, if I may, like, I, especially with the release of uh, Llama CPP, that was such a unique breakthrough where you had an open source model, a model that was open source, but then a community member had changed it to enable it using C++, and now you just opened up opportunities to have low-level hardware that's able to produce results um, at an incomparable rate uh, with quantizable effects. And it, it, the fact that now the world can, can take advantage of those models and open and start new companies and new solutions on hardware that's generally commoditized and easily accessible, but now enabling new levels of AI, new levels of capability, that wouldn't have not been possible unless it was built on the shoulders of giants. Sure, but would we even be having this conversation if Facebook, a private closed source company, had not dropped their model weights online? Like every model that's come after that has been derived off of that base. And I think it's an interesting question to debate, like why did Facebook make Llama open source? And like, I, I don't know, I, I think there's a ton of different reasons, but either way, no matter how you shake it, they spent at least 10, if not $20 million on data alone for that model, and who knows how many, how much compute. Why did they make it open source? And I would argue they made it open source because they wanted exactly things like Llama CPP, people to innovate on top of their architecture. Why did they make the license say you can only use data inside Llama? I'm pontificating, but right, but now that you're, you're forcing innovation on that architecture, which will then accrue back to Facebook right. directly. And so, I don't know, I'd be curious to hear others' take on why, I mean, I think why, a little why Llama bit of, is open source. I mean, it's the same reason IBM loved Linux, right? In part because it commodified, like, sort of one of the key strengths of their biggest competitor. And then over time, it changes the dynamic of the industry, right? And I think, like, for, Meta, the great thing is they don't make money off of this, and all their competitors make a bunch of money off of it, and so they kind of kick them the groin and feel really good about themselves, right? And then they become heroes again, and I think that that's that sort of commercial interest and like that straightforward I, strategy I, piece. That's I, PyTorch, right? Like but PyTorch I, I do, is the same thing. I do think it is a, a way, we, there's another aspect which is the human aspect of closed versus open source and people's careers. To the extent that software ex developer is still a job that exists in five years, right? <laughs> it's not all taken away by LLMs. Then it, we do believe there will still be software engineers. Uh, if you're going to work at, on the biggest thing, which is AI, and you're going to Google, or you're going to Facebook, or you're getting stolen away by OpenAI, then you, you, it's a, it's a mark of pride Right? Uh, why do you have conferences like these? Right? Why are people talking about Scala and 
all these open source frameworks. That's how they get promoted in their company, right? Let's be serious, right? Like people, A, care about building these systems more than they care about which specific company they work for. And, and, and so by the way, I agree with almost all of that. Yeah. And I would just contend though that if you are actually trying to make a really great business for 2029, that actually your core would not be an open source model, but instead your value would come from a bunch of other places that end up being kind of proprietary for various reasons. I think it kind of just boils back to like, what is business? It's, it's you know, if, if I want to charge someone money for something, I have to have something that's worth charging money for. And if all of my things are open, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like right. it, you know. I mean, it, 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 well, I mean, you could, I, I guess, conceivably, you become a services company, essentially, right? But but people want to, VCs don't like that. Well, <laughs> but they're great businesses. But, they're great but, businesses. But, but, but but product companies, subscription companies, companies that make revenue yeah. at a like look Google. I, if you rewind what twenty years, all the articles about Google were these mind blowing. They only have n people, and look at like the, the the revenue per employee is astronomical, right? And we'll look at I don't know OpenAI. I don't know what their numbers are now, but there's a similar story that these things, the, the, these LLMs, the, the you know a, let's just call it AI now, I guess. Uh, AI doesn't exist, so it's always going to be called AI, right? We're not there yet. Uh, but to the extent that open source LLMs have unleashed an entire sector. Like Facebook is a great benefactor, right? People, people spend a lot of time bashing Facebook, but in this world, what Jan LeCun and, and, and these folks have, have been doing, they've been on the forefront of pushing for open source when it comes to AI. And I do think there will be companies, there will be billion dollar companies built on this stuff, no doubt. Um, it's, it's just hard to know I'd say it's, the question is how many closed source AI companies are going to make it. I think it's very risky to be a closed source AI company right now. Right. What do you mean by closed source AI? Like building a model? That yeah, is I think closed? we're, yeah. we're yeah. getting caught in the technicality between what is open and closed. <laughs> <laughs> because for everyone, everyone, it seems that if it starts open source, it's open forever. Well, well, that is I would source. say open AI, <laughs> GPT-4 is closed, right? Correct. We, the code is not available. The weights are not available. The paper is high level. Yeah, that, that, that is, for my definition, that is close. And it's so just confusing to have this debate. Mm -hmm. Open AI is closed. Yes. Okay. <laughs> let me, close let, Facebook is open. <laughs> let me try like another sort of like sort of approach on this, which is sort of like a question like what is open source good at and what is it not good at? There's definitely a way that open source is like terrific for so many things, but it's notoriously bad for user interfaces, right? The you know sort of like we've just not had many great examples other than there was never a good open source Windows, right? That's right, that's right. And there's almost a way in which like in those cases you had to like deal with a very sort of narrow, deep set of questions that actually closed source is better at addressing. And one version, one suggestion might be like the way we think about models in the future is that the ones that are going to be very successful are going to end up becoming more narrow and then you're going to have to build all, you know, like collect all this data that you're not going to want to share with other people. You spend all this time just getting like this little, your little end-to-end -end thing working very, very well. And in that way, you know, sort of the, the sort of like the models that will make, that you'll make money off of as opposed to the models that you use to either get promoted or to piss on the pot of your competitors, like those models will actually be more like user interfaces and thus like sort of more commercial. Are you arguing that the competitive differentiation is the workflow, not the model? Like if, if right, I think that's kind of what you're getting at in some ways. Well, actually, no, I'm, I'm actually in this case trying to make the argument that like all the, all the hard work you're doing around like collecting just the right data, presenting just the right data, like that, all that narrow, narrow, narrow work is actually more analogous to the process of making a user interface than it is to the process of like solving, like, you know, like, you know, Linux is great because it solves a wide range of problems that people have done in a distributed, clever way, right? And I think like that's, I, I think that's another argument for why perhaps like, um, open source might not be the right primary way to think about models. But what, I guess when you think about when a company becomes closed source, it starts from you know, a group of people looking to solve a problem. And that, in that case, that problem is still a problem because it's not a closed source solution that 
has a pr provided a, a, a known solution for it. So someone might take the stance of saying, I'm going to go and create a solution, and they have to almost come, come up with a choice of looking for open source alternatives and making a change, augmenting it such that they have a secret sauce or a solution that then enables that that solution to coming to, to, to fruition, and then that becoming an, a, a moat if it's in and of itself to solve that underlying problem. That ultimately comes from open source principles as a foundation. It turns into closed source because they don't release that moat because they have to license it, they have to make money off of it, but they can theoretically you know, lease, release certain components that they believe that the industry might be, be able to benefit. So I do think that open source, it starts from an open source principle because they're gonna be taking things that are off the shelf, relatively available, low cost, but they're gonna be providing that niche that customers are willing to pay for to solve that specific problem. And that IP is gonna always remain private, just like many other companies that have very strong IP that they can't just give away, otherwise they would just no longer cease to exist. Do you think that's closed or open source? Closed. Why? Um, because the, they didn't choose it, the foundation, because it was open. They, choose, they chose the foundation because it was there and available, and you want to build your company as fast as possible. If there was a closed source, I mean, it's by definition, if I had to license it from somebody else, but I had full control over it, and it was 10x better than the open source solution, which am I gonna choose? Probably gonna choose the closed one, because fundamentally, it's not a philosophical choice, it's a business choice. And so I just go back to all the businesses that I've talked to that like they don't have a philosophical position whether it's open or closed. They just want to get stuff done. But but and so I'll go just one I just want to go back to the data which is if you agree that data makes the model and that whoever provides the most value so has the best performance will win over time then and companies take open source models they then incorporate their own proprietary data but by definition can't send those weights back into the open source community how is the open source model going to continue to advance at the same rate so for like an insurance adjuster or something right if they don't have access to that data and fundamentally it never will be open uh but i think that is organization dependent, right? So that was an organization that made a choice. So for example, like, like a Salesforce, uh, in the earlier wave of AI ML work, uh, the, the team, the ML team working at Salesforce, uh, similar to many other enterprise companies, were constrained by the like, master service agreement that was in place where everybody is treated as a silo, right? I think. I, I, I may be wrong about this, but I think everybody has essentially their own Oracle database with Salesforce. Their data is locked away there. Um, that, in the same way, the, the AI team within that enterprise company like Salesforce can't blend the data from all those customers, right? Which is extremely limiting in terms of innovation. Now, they still had a great AI team that did a lot of foundational work, um, but you compare that to Google or Microsoft where the agreements were set up in a different way where they could use that data uh, to improve these models. And I do think you start to see a, a, a divide. But I, but I think that the idea that, um, you know, the ability to feed back that data like, like uh, would, would cripple open source, I don't think we've seen that to be the case, right? I think, you know, the seeds of this are the engineers and researchers at big companies who can subsidize the fundamental research or universities. Uh, they compound and build. Uh, the, the difference is there was open source software and then there's been these worlds like scikit-learn and other things where it's, it's both research, TensorFlow, PyTorch, it's both at the boundary of, of research and open research along with open source software. And it's a rocky world where sharing data is still messy, evals, and is it polluted, like replication is hard, but we need it to be open. Anybody who, does, who forks off, I think in the long run they're, they're crippling themselves because they still have to keep up with everything happening in the open. Now you've got twice the work, right? You've got your own code base and all this other stuff. But meaning, are you suggesting though that it's a bad idea for someone to fine tune a model and keep that model private for themselves? No, I'm, I'm just saying that it's a bad idea 
to fork the universe and develop proprietary models and not be in the ecosystem at all. Like I, Facebook is doing the right thing yeah, by I, keeping their keep their their keeping everything alive. And I think you get the, the, the framing I've heard of this debate is well, it's data and that's the only thing that matters in the model. And like, yes, like I would agree at some level, like, you know, you need your model to be fine tuned on your proprietary data. But at the end of the day, that's not the only thing that impacts the model. Yeah, right? This is exactly what phase, the architecture of the model, you know, the, the training regime, how it's going to like all, all of those those fun things that are like kind of hidden under the hood by a lot. But there's a lot of complexity there. Yeah, and you implement and that's each what of those. Facebook essentially did was they made that open source. Yeah. I mean, you could argue do they leave everything open source, but you know, right? They, they want people to build on top of that architecture. So I would say to your so, point, it's kind of it's about releasing that back. You don't want to go build on my own version of Transformers. I'd rather build on top of the right. the open standard for it. Right. So yeah. Everybody moves of, faster. I mean, you talked to lots of customers, like sort of. What parts of those that resonates and doesn't resonate? Yeah, that's a great point. I think some of it, like the talent thing is very real where people don't want to hire expensive ML engineers because you need someone who can fine tune the models and they know how to fidget with these weights and they need to deploy them. If someone's doing it for them, they're going to take that. Um, what you were saying is it's less about open source or even closed sources. Can I run this securely? I really don't care where it's coming from. Um, and that's where I feel like it's, if you're building the next company, hopefully the model is only a part of it. There's the data, there's the user experience, and there's probably some, hopefully, domain knowledge that you're bringing in. The AI, hopefully, is a important, but not the only portion. And then it could be closed or open source, it doesn't matter. So I think from what we see in the market, it's what is quickest, what is highest quality, what is cheap, and what can I get talent for? Um, I would say that seems to be winning out, at least right now. Thanks, Malasia. I think it's this point I'd like to open this to the audience. So, members of the audience, you can ask a question or you can make a statement. And both teams can answer the question or respond to the statement. This is kind of a statement, kind of a question. So, they, they, there's that Mike Tyson quote, everybody's got a plan until they get punched in the face. And in this case, I think everyone's got a, a plan until they actually launch the thing and realize their inference costs are blowing them out. And, and so I, I think in a lot of these cases, the argument for open source comes down to, and I'm sorry, I've forgotten your name, but your point of, yeah, this prototype's lovely, but once I run this thing in production, I need to take these costs down really, really fast. And then all the accuracy needs drop out and all the desire, all that other fun stuff drops out and I go to open source not because of a cheap license, but because I can get under the hood, tune the crap out of this thing, and drop my inference costs. Does that resonate with you? That would be the question, and or please tell me where I'm wrong. I'm not sure I completely caught that. That was from me, correct? Or? That was just No, answer. okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure. Yeah. Well, you guys need, need clarification? Like, open source is good because you can aggressively fine-tune and kind of optimize to the frontier of cost, cost, quality, latency for your use case? Is that kind of what you're driving at? Yeah, does that resonate? Does that make I, sense? I, I, would ask, I would ask the question, so if a company had a base model that was 2x more performant than open source, and they offered the exact same customization and fine-tuning abilities, and they were both the same speed, would you choose the open source model or the closed source model? It, it, it depends on how much the thing costs on inference. That's my point. If one's costing me a dollar and the other one's costing me 25 cents, I'm going 25 cents every day. Yeah, so you're going to go with the one that's the most efficient. Yeah. yeah. Cost. And I, and I guess your point is like, it's a great question which one's going to emerge as the better solution. And I think it is a little bit of these questions of time scales, right? That there will be a period where it makes a lot of sense to be open source, and there will be another period where it makes a lot more sense to be closed source, and then there'll be a period after that where it makes sense to be open source. And I think that, like, the, my best version of why closed source makes sense for, like, this next period is just that we're going to be at this point where, like, the value is going to be that the guys who end up doing a bunch of proprietary stuff, and you're right, long term, then something's going to be commodified, you're going to sort of say, oh, let's make this part open source again because we can all work together. And so, I, I, I think that's, I think that's the strongest argument for closed source. I'm not, Sure, is that like fair? I'm, I'm gonna jump yeah. in one last bit of anecdote because I realize this may actually, is a, a friend of mine working for 
somebody under NDA just went through Llama 2 and like rewrote big chunks of in assembly code, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and managed to take it down to like a quarter of the GPUs that anybody else can use. And maybe that's uh, underlying it just so you understand. That's my understanding of what I can do with open source that I can't do with open AI. With open AI. And do my you plan on contributing that back to the community? That's a really open and interesting question. But just to be clear, that's what I'm thinking about is like, look, if I can take this thing down to run on one or two A100s instead of four or five, that's worth a shit ton of money to me on a run rate basis once I'm doing inference. And I can't do that with ChatGPT. So that, that's where I'm coming from, just so you understand anecdotally. And, and, and I would 100% I would agree with that. If you really think about companies that are able to deliver solution, they're going with first open source principles. They're going to start from a place where they have control of data. Like if you go closed source, you're not really, you have no autonomy to really make those decisions. You're working with folks. You can, of course, convince them that is a big use case for your company and that would potentially drive significant revenue. But at the end of the day, you don't really have full control. If you're able to have the expertise um, to be able to do it yourself. Now you create a moat, and going back to the initial question, which one is going to be potentially a billion dollar company? It's going to be the company that actually makes that decision to go open source and have the autonomy to make those changes. You mean you mean build using an open source model? Model. That's what. Right. You, that's what you mean. Start. Right. Yeah. Start. You're, in some ways, like for you guys, the key question is, would you start with an open source model or not? Right. And I, I, and, and I think we're, we're approaching it from a different perspective, yeah, which is, yeah. you know, if for, you're, for you make money. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. And what's good enough? Like, I, I, think, I think your <laughs> argument makes sense because Llama 2 is actually good. If it was still Llama 1, I don't think people would be using it at all. So. And then and, and let me try another one just out the side. It's like, sort of, which is like, I, I, I buy this idea that, like, you know, sort of building a lot makes lots of sense in lots of ways, but if you're building an application literally right now, like, and your first version, wouldn't your first version be on top of GPD-4 in order to figure out what the efficient frontier was? And then you'd like, you find is that out an argument, that was my is that an argument for open source or closed source, an argument for using the best model? Well, no, no, I mean, like, I'm just trying, but I'm, I'm just like, trying. Like, yeah, yeah, I think it's a lot the same way it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, I'm just trying, I'm just, like, but, I mean, but, 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 all right, let's rewind, uh, I don't know, what is it, 15 years, 10 years, I, I don't remember. Now, you're a VC and you're talking to a founder and you ask them, like, why don't you build your first version on Heroku, right? And lots of companies, you know, and startups built things like on things, uh, platforms like Heroku, and then their bills just go through the roof. And someone, you know, another VC in a later round looks at the startup and says, why the hell did you build on Heroku? What, what is, the, your bills are astronomical. It, Why don't it, you just use like an open source platform, you know? Right, and so, to me, <laughs> so, now, and so seriously speaking though, like to me though, like the interesting thing is, in the case of building on top of Heroku initially, is you just get to product market fit and you can find that out much, much faster. Yeah. And I think the same And then you outgrow true. closed source and you right. use and open so source. Like, <laughs> but then remember, like, right. the question is, where are you starting, right? And I think, like, the question, like, I mean, long term, you do a bunch of things, right? You know, like, but, but as far as, like, where would you start? I yeah. think the answer is you start with, like, the best model. And for I better or worse, the answer is you start right with now. the fastest path to market to yeah. learn what you need to learn, yeah. which, and, you know, in some cases could be open source, in other cases could I, be closed. But I think, I mean, but you agree that mostly right now, if, so seriously, like if you're literally trying to make a decision like tomorrow, you're building a new application, right? You would probably start playing with GPT-4 before you figured out how to optimize. On I mean, it depends on the application, right? Yeah, but, that's right. but yeah, like and and they have, uh, it, you know, to uh, chat BT, to back up Chat GPT, who's unofficially on our team, right? <laughs> uh, I would say a, a, a open source model, mind yeah, you. Yeah, chat they, GPT. Well, they open <laughs> they open source Whisper, and 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 then somebody you know, optimized uh, what would they open source and now it's like six times faster, right? Uh, depending on yeah. how you measure why, faster. Why did I guess. they do that? Exactly, that's what people are debating right now yeah. on Reddit and Twitter and everything else, or X, I'm sorry, whatever it's called. Um, I, I think that uh, that would be an example of... If they were around today, if like, they made that same decision it's, today, would they do the same thing? Well, just like Facebook, they're probably thinking, well, audio transcription is not our competitive advantage. Who cares? Yeah. That it's not know, that guessing. valuable to them. Maybe, and, it's like, just right, a piece, yeah. it's enough, but... but but it, it, it engenders uh, a lot of advancement that they could use. Maybe they just don't want to invest in that right now. I'm just hypothesizing. I mean, my guess is that, like, in a lot of these cases, 
you know, sort of, it's like kind of like the, oh, we can do this, we, either we can show it off, or, you know, sort of we can commoditize someone else, or we can screw yeah. with other people's business models. And I, and I do think that, like, if, if, honestly speaking, if you're like a 2024, and you're starting a business, and you're like, oh, how do I make this the billion dollar one? I, I don't know that you start off with the assumption that we're gonna open source everything we do. Yeah. No, I agree, and I, even if you look at the open source companies today, they're really open core. Right, mm -hmm. they, they, they open the core to enough to get developers in, and then once you hit the hard stuff, there's the SaaS platform, right? And that's, that's the playbook. And so I'd really argue, like, is Langchain really open source anymore? All right, guys, I think uh, we're <laughs> coming to time. Right? Open so, the whole can of worms. <laughs> open the whole so, can of worms. <laughs> so uh, here's, you know, uh, the final part, so now, you heard everything, right? You asked some questions. So there are closing statements. So you guys are basically, let's, let's have each team five minutes to make, given everything you heard, each team will distill the best argument, right? And then we'll vote again and see whether we swayed any, swayed any votes. So closed source, go first with your best argument for closed source. You guys sure you want to share your argument though? Is it closed source or open source? I think that the essence of the question is, if you're starting a company in 2024, right, are you by default sort of one, starting with an open source model, open sourcing the work that you're doing and like for your core, core value added parts of your business? And I think the other question is, where are we in the business cycle? Are we at the point where it makes, like at the early, early point where it makes sense to collaborate a lot and open source a bunch? Or are we also at the latest part of the market when it makes sense to commodify everything and thus also open source? Or are we in the middle where there are lots of gains to be had from people who end up building interesting things that match the needs from the market? I don't know, what are other angles? I feel like you had a couple of clever technical angles and you had a couple of good experiences from your customers. I guess we're summarizing that, yeah. I think uh, if you're starting a company right now, you're gonna pick the best model, which is open source right now, so unless, uh, sorry, it's closed source. We're gonna talk about our real feelings <laughs> later. Um, but this was in my talk earlier, lesson one, start with GBT. It tells you where the boundaries are. Don't worry about open source until you get your thing working. The thing that you're taking to market is not the model. If it is the case, then you know different arguments. If it's actually broader than the model, just don't waste your time on models right now. Just get the damn thing working, and then you can switch out models, etc. Um, and these things are really expensive to build, so fewer people will have access in the long term. Um, okay, I would say it boils down to a couple points. Uh, one is just around like resource allocation, and that closed source companies have way more money to throw at these projects, and. Uh, data assimilation and cleaning is extremely expensive. Mm. And um, I think whoever is going to amass the most data in a particular domain will have some sort of advantage. Um, but I agree, like a model isn't everything, right? It's not, it shouldn't make or break your company. AI should be a tool, not a feature. Um, I think it also comes down to quality um, and consistency. You know, I would say some closed source companies have great quote, great code quality, some don't, but in general, there tends to be more focus on things like putting in production, and security, and hardening, and following best practices, and compliance, and, and all of this stuff. Um, and then, you know, I think, lastly, it comes down to who's gonna be able to deliver the model the quickest and at the lowest price. And there seems to be this, like, tipping point in size of company where they're able to invest, like Microsoft, in this infrastructure to run language models very quickly for low cost. And I think I would love to see, but am dubious that we're going to see a similar type of development in the open source community. But I would love to see it, but I don't think it's gonna happen. Is it the final word? That's it. Sounds good. Oh, All right. Maybe, okay, there's, there's one angle that I don't think we wanted to break, bring up that I think folks use sort of a little unfairly, which is like the national security angle, right? That there is a way in which like potentially some of these models end up becoming quite important that like sort of we have import export controls. And um, I don't know exactly whether like the models we're talking about hit that point, but there will be some point where someone says, oh wait a minute, like you can't like let other countries use this. And um, that conversation, I think we just didn't want to bring up 
but I'll throw it as the last one. We last did anyway. <laughs> All right, this is great. This is great. I really like the tie-in to the Apex the Summit. Apex poop. Summit is happening in, in the city right now, so this is great geopolitical angle. Thank you, James. All right, now you heard the strongest statements from the closed source team. Open source team, that's your final word. Um, I, I feel like this debate could have been a little less confusing if um, we were open about the fact that everybody is using open source models, right, in some way. Even if you're at one of these closed source companies, just to keep up, you have to be using open source models. So uh, I think that the idea that you're gonna have these companies built on closed source models, and they're, like, there could be, let's say there's four to five big name, startups that everybody wants to go work for and use and that they're built on some open AI, or I'm sorry, they're built on some closed AI models. I think it's very unlikely, right? Like people mostly follow the heat and you could look at like what, uh, Hadoop and those er that era and the cloud era, like somebody has a breakthrough, everybody moves towards it it, in this case, you know, yet again, Google like gave it away for free, right? <laughs> and, they, and they publish papers, and everybody's just like taking taking up the torch. And it's 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 now up to the people in this room to build on the back of that open foundation and to keep it keep it moving and keep society moving forward. So that's yeah, what I think is going to happen. I think the, we're, like there's a lot of conflation that's been happening about you know open source and then how does my business model work? And fundamentally, I think you know in, in closing here, right? Open source models like lead to innovation. They lead to all of these great benefits for for companies out there. And that's different than you know having an open source model and then saying I have a successful business model. And, and I would encourage us in our vote here to not vote on the business model, but to vote on the open source aspects of, of the debate originally <laughs> raised. And so I you're, don't you're believe you get to the, rebut my closing argument. The preposition of the argument at the very end. Okay, cool. <laughs> if you don't like the conversation, change it. Come on. Yeah, and I would say for me would be, you know, with open source, you're able to lower the costs of your 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 resources, your run weight, you're working with commoditized um, you know, assets, uh, you're able to move very quickly. Um, if you do go with the closed source route, of course, there's not really a, a, a moat, there's not really a, an edge that you're able to do to distinguish your customers because your customers can just go with the same closed source solution. So if you're that company that's gonna really, really be that billion dollar company, I mean, you're gonna have to come up with something that's unique and it's gonna be built on open source principles that it's extensible, modular, and you know, reusable. Like, it, without any of that modularity or extensibility, you, you, don't, you wouldn't necessarily even have the, the leverage to be able to create that space, I think. Um, so I think it starts with the open source, but then potentially changes, but I think that's where the journey begins. Like, I don't think anyone can just buy software that anyone can access and you become a billion dollar company, unless you do something unique, but then you're gonna be leveraging some open source capabilities that has extensible feature. We, we have like Coke and Pepsi, we have McDonald's and Burger King. We're not gonna get five more open AIs, right? Like, you've got open AI, it could be a flash in the pan, it could be the next massive company that eclipses Google and Facebook and Amazon. Uh, we don't know yet, that's a business model question. That's not what we're here for, right? We're here for open source. Source model. Open source. All right. All right, guys. You heard. Open source. Open source. Open source and open more. source. No. Yeah, open let's, source. Let's, we heard both tips. Let's take the vote again. Again, I remind you, the motion is that in five years, the new billion dollar companies will be built on open source AI. Who supports this motion now? Who believes that open source will be the way to build new companies? All right. We have... Approximately the same number of hands, maybe. <laughs> maybe, maybe even less, maybe even less. All right, now, who believes that in five years, the new billion dollar companies will be built on closed source AI? And we have even fewer hands for that position. So I would say approximately it's a wash, well. <laughs> but 
we have some change. So I want you guys to thank thank you our panelists. I think we had a lot of great topics illuminated through this debate. So really appreciate all the all the discussion. And with that, the tenth anniversary scale by the bay is officially closed. Thank you very much for attending. And please come to join us in this temple of cold data and AI next year. I think this is the, our home from now on. And the CFP opens in May. So please think of your, C, you know, your best submissions. If your company will sponsor us, sponsor us. It will be great. This is one of the few independent conferences left standing. So we did the first 10 years. Let's make it the next 10 years. Thanks, guys. So what do we actually